Welcome to the Travel Gluten-Free Podcast, where you can listen in on how to lead a gluten-free lifestyle with more fun and ease. Travel Gluten-Free is like having a best friend by your side to give you the most up-to-date gluten-free traveler information. Let Travel Gluten-Free be your number one source for tips, tricks, and advice you can use to safely navigate your next gluten-free travel adventure. Enjoy food, enjoy travel, and enjoy life. And now, here's your show host, Illiquity. Hey, my gluten-free friends, this is Illiquity, and I'm so glad you are back for another episode of the Travel Gluten-Free Podcast. We only have one more episode in the season after today, and my next episode, I'm super excited to have Matt from Gluten-Free Street Gang back on the show. So I'm really excited. We're t- we talk about European bakeries. You definitely want to check that out because um, at the time of this recording, I'm about to go on a cruise. But by the time you guys hear this, I would have been back from a European cruise. So I will definitely tell you all about that in season eight for sure. But for today, what I want to tell you, because the holiday season is upon us, we always want to make sure we have the correct food in place, right? For our gluten-free friends, if you're listening to this and you have gluten-free family members or friends, or you want to make sure you have really good gluten-free bread and baking products for yourself during the holidays. So in this episode, we're going to talk about what is in gluten-free bread and some of the differences between the grains, uh, gluten-free grains and non-grain gluten-free flour. But before we jump into the show today, I wanted to ask you if you can rate and review Travel Gluten-Free on your favorite podcast player. So no matter what podcast player you listen to, not only leave a star rating, but if you can also leave a review underneath it, that really helps other people who have celiac disease and who are gluten-free for medical reasons find my podcast so they can listen to it and be empowered to travel on their own. I've actually had people come up to me and said, I haven't traveled in years and I listened to your show or I bought your book and I love it. And then they, they're empowered. It's just the knowledge you need to know to find out how to travel gluten-free safely. So please rate and review Travel Gluten-Free on your podcast player, no matter if that's Stitcher, if that's Himalaya, Apple, whatever one you listen to. And also, if you want to see the videos, I'm going to be posting the videos on YouTube this winter. So make sure that you head on over to my YouTube channel and check out the video episodes as well. So let's jump in with today's topic is what's in gluten-free bread. All right, so let's first start talking about gluten-free versus certified gluten-free. Because if you have celiac disease, this is really important to know the difference between gluten-free and certified gluten-free. So gluten-free just means it doesn't have any gluten-containing ingredients. It shouldn't have any gluten-containing ingredients. And even if it does say gluten-free on the front of the package, you always want to read the ingredients because in America, it takes six months, up to six months to pull a product off the shelf that does not have the correct ingredients label on it. So you could have a product that says gluten-free on the front of the package and you flip it over and it has wheat in it or it has barley in it or it has you know, triticale. So make sure you always read the ingredients and double check. Gluten-free just means it has no gluten-containing ingredients, but it could be made in a facility that processes wheat or other gluten-containing ingredients. If you have celiac disease, you definitely don't want to eat that product because that could be unsafe for us who have celiac disease. If you have gluten intolerance, listen to your body. It might be okay for it, but that's also different from celiac disease. So if you have gluten intolerance, you might be able to eat that and not have a problem. But if you have celiac disease, definitely do not eat a product that is made in a facility that produces wheat, processes or produces wheat or other gluten-containing ingredients because that's going to have cross-contamination and then that will definitely make you sick. And if it doesn't make you sick, it's going to make you sick and you're not going to know it and that's not good either. There's always the asymptomatic things where like, hey, it's hurting your insides, but you can't see it and you don't feel it. Definitely stay away from anything that is made in a facility that produces wheat. So if you pick up a baking mix and it says that, don't buy it if you have celiac disease. Certified gluten-free is a whole different ballgame. Certified gluten-free, several different certifications. One is gluten intolerance group. Another one is the certified gluten-free with a little circle with a GF on it. So if it's certified gluten-free, that means it is safe for celiacs and it has under 20 parts per million in it. Those are the products we want to look for if you have celiac disease or if you're very serious about your gluten-free diet and you want to eat as gluten-free as possible, you definitely want a certified product, which I'm going to talk about later in the show, one of my, my favorites 
certified products to have. As far as baking bread, gluten-free versus certified gluten-free. So those are the main differences. And I really dive deep into that into my book, The Guide to Traveling Gluten-Free in the first chapter. So if you're interested in reading more about that, definitely check out my book. You can go on my website, travelglutenfreepodcast.com, click on book and read more about it. Let's talk about ingredients for gluten-free bread. So there's two main types of ingredients for gluten-free bread. You can have grain, gluten-free grains, and you can have gluten-free flour that does not have grains. So what does that mean? So the gluten-free flour that is not made from grains is usually made from root vegetables, such as cassava, potatoes, almonds. Well, almonds not a root vegetable, but it's a nut flour. Root vegetables and nut flours would all be considered gluten-free. Coconut flour, and coconut is technically considered a nut, but it's actually really a fruit. <laughs> Just so you guys know, I took ethnobotany in college and it really drives me crazy that they call coconut a nut because it's really not. It's a fruit. Tapioca flour, because that is also a root vegetable. Tiger nut, which is really good, is very nutritious. And also tiger nut is a tuber and it's a little more pricey, but it's really great flour. I like to use tiger nut flour. And arrowroot flour. So arrowroot's another one that is a root put. It's gluten-free. You can use it in any of your gluten-free baking, and it's really great. And one of the things I use when I'm doing holiday baking is because we can't use wheat flour and I can't use cornstarch just because corn is another um, food that irritates my system and causes me inflammation. I use, we use potato flour to thicken all of our gravies because A, it's, it's healthier than corn because it's not going to give you all the carbohydrates too, which cornstarch is not going to give you a lot. But if you're trying to avoid corn or you just are trying to avoid grains in particular, because I am on a grain-free diet because I found out that grain-free diet not just gluten-free, but in addition to gluten-free, grain-free works better for my body and it helps maintain my weight and my inflammation that we use potato flour for a thickener instead of cornstarch. So keep that in mind when you are making your holiday foods and making your foods for yourself and your family. Gluten-free flours that are from grain. So this means all of these flowers contain, are made from a grain. So these are flowers, flowers right now that I'm avoiding, but if you don't have to avoid grains and you're gluten-free, you can eat any of these flowers as long as they're not produced in a facility that also produces wheat. So rice flour, either white or brown, and sometimes it's sweet rice flour, sometimes it's not, but any rice flour should be gluten-free. Make sure you read the label and make sure it's not, again, produced in a facility that has wheat and other gluten-containing ingredients. Quinoa is a grain that is also made into a flour, which has a really good nutty, earthy taste. Corn flour, millet flour, and millet, I will warn you, tends to be really, really dry. I think it's probably out of all of the flours, I've used the driest gluten-free flour. But it doesn't really change the flavor. It doesn't have like a really bold flavor. So if you're looking for something with a little milder flavor, millet flour is good. It is just, it is really dry. So you, whatever you make, you have to eat within a couple days. Teff flour. So teff is actually the main grain in Ethiopian bread. And typically Ethiopian bread does not contain wheat. So we can eat Ethiopian teff flour bread. Always double, definitely double check if you're at a restaurant and say, does it have wheat or any other grains in it besides teff? And usually they don't. So I've gone to Ethiopian restaurants and eaten the teff bread, which is really, really tasty. I really like it. Oat, but just make sure with oats, if you're new to celiac disease or you're not aware of this, oat flour can easily be cross-contaminated in the production of oat in oats. It can also have some other grains in it sometimes. So you want to get purity protocol oats, or if the oat flour says it's certified gluten-free, then you know that that's safe to eat if you have celiac disease. Now, again, if you're gluten intolerant or if you're trying gluten-free, you could try oat flour that's not certified gluten-free because oat flour in and of itself clearly is gluten-free, but the processing can contaminate it and add gluten to its ingredients. Amaranth flour is another one that is gluten-free. Sorghum and buckwheat. So buckwheat, amazingly enough, even though it has wheat in the name, is completely gluten-free. I have this amazing buckwheat cereal that I love to eat, and it's a hot cereal, and it's really great because I used to love to eat cream of wheat growing up. Clearly, I can't eat that anymore. So I now have cream of buckwheat, which is really tasty, very nutritious, and I think I might have some for lunch today. Buckwheat is another one that you can use buckwheat flour and it's really hearty, earthy taste. I really like it. Um, and that's a really good one if you're looking for a grain with a really good flavor to it. We've gone over grain, gluten-free grain-based flour, and gluten-free non-grain flour. So the non-grain ones, again, are cassava, potato, almond, 
coconut, tapioca, tiger nut, and arrowroot. So these are the different flour. And I may have missed a couple, but these are all the ones I went up into my baking cabinet and I have I have all of these right now. And anyway, these are all that are typically gluten-free. Just again, read the label. And you can use these in your gluten-free cooking for making gluten-free bread. So any of these could be in your gluten-free bread depending on the recipe that you have. Now, sometimes you can switch some stuff out like there's tapioca starch. And typically they tell you not to switch it out for flour because tapioca starch tends to be thinner. But you can sometimes switch things out. I've switched things out before. Or sometimes I'll just use like a one-to-one -one baking mix like from Bob's Red Mill or Simple Mills or something like that. So you could also do that too. But any of these flours are fine and safe if you are eating gluten-free bread. All right, my friends, we're going to take a break right here. But when we come back, I'm going to tell you about my uh, so a, a brand that I love that's certified gluten-free and grain-free. And we'll get back into that in just a bit. Hey, my gluten-free friend, this is Aliquity. Are you thrilled that COVID is on its way out and that safe travel is coming back? Are you ready to get out there and enjoy what travel has to offer? I know I'm ready and excited to get out and explore the world again, and I'm sure you are too. I'm currently planning my next big vacation adventure with my book, The Guide to Traveling Gluten-Free. If you're a gluten-free traveler, you'll enjoy learning how to travel gluten-free by air, gluten-free road trip, camping, gluten-free cruising, and even how to find a safe gluten-free restaurant no matter where you're at in the world. In my guide, you'll also find which cities and countries are gluten-free friendly and which cities and countries aren't so gluten-free friendly. With over 200 pages of practical information on how to travel gluten-free, you, your family, and your friends and children can now travel safely without experiencing food anxiety, no matter where your journey takes you. If you're looking for the ultimate gluten-free travel guide that will assist you in learning how to plan your next gluten-free adventure, then pick up the guide to traveling gluten-free by visiting my website, travelglutenfreepodcast.com and clicking on book or simply search up the guide to traveling gluten-free on Amazon. With over 300 copies sold in the first two weeks alone, I'm so excited to offer my book so we can keep our gluten-free travelers in our community safe and have the ability to travel freely once again. Now let's jump back into the show. All right, we're going to jump into the second half of our show today. But before we do, my gluten-free friends, I'd like to ask you to review my show on your favorite podcast player. And not just leave a star rating. If you could also type in a review that talks about one thing you've learned on my podcast. And it can be anything. It can be, hey, I learned about gluten-free baking. Or, hey, I learned about how to travel gluten-free on an airplane. Because that helps other people find my podcast and will help other people who are gluten-free learn the information they need to know to become independent and travel safely with celiac disease no matter where they are in the world. So let's jump back into the second half. So the first half we talked about what's the difference between gluten-free and certified gluten-free, also the difference between grain-free and flours that are gluten-free but are made from grains. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about other ingredients you have for your gluten-free bread. So a lot of times with gluten-free bread, one of the things, because clearly it doesn't have gluten, gluten makes it stick together. So gluten-free bread does tend to be a little drier. So one of the things I do is when I'm making a recipe from scratch is I will add a little bit less flour than they tell you to add and keep the, the liquids the same because a lot of times, especially in the winter, it's drier out. Um, your house is drier. There's less humidity. So that bread or whatever your the bread you're making is going to be really dry if you add the same amount of flour. And the thing is, is like, yes, you can add more liquid, but then it changes the taste of your bread. What I do as a default is I add less of whatever the flour is, especially if it is a root vegetable or a nut flour, one of the grain freeze. When I'm baking, those seem to take up way more water, especially like almond and coconut flour, than the, gr the gluten-free flours that are grain-based, like rice and quinoa. I always add a little bit less flour than the recipe is telling me to and the same amount of liquids and then go from there because it's much easier to add like a teaspoon of flour at a time to, to add to get to the thickness that you want it to be than to add more water and then your recipe kind of gets really messed up. Keep that in mind. Another thing you keep in mind is eggs help with making your gluten-free bread fluffier. So if you're vegan, one of my friends, um, Heather Zeitzwolf, who has a podcast 
get the balance right. And we did our gluten-free Portland series together for season seven. She uses apple cider vinegar and baking soda because those two are an acid and base. And when they interact, they create bubbles and bubbles is what makes the air in your bread. So if you are vegan, you can always use baking soda and apple cider vinegar, put those together as an egg substitute. There's also lots of different egg substitutes out there. I know Bob's Red Mill makes one you can use uh, if you are vegan or you don't want to eat eggs or you can't eat eggs. Another thing, baking soda. So just FYI, if you're new to baking, baking soda and uh, baking powder are not the same thing. They're completely different and you cannot substitute one for the other because they do two different things. So baking soda reacts with anything that's a vinegar to create bubbles. And then baking powder is something that helps your bread rise. So baking powder is really good to use to make your bread rise a little more along with eggs. If you're in a high altitude setting, which is over 3,000 feet, which I used to live at 7,000 feet, you have to use half of the baking soda and half of the baking powder if you're making a recipe from scratch. So if you're not making a recipe from scratch, you just want to add a tablespoon more of flour so that your bread doesn't deflate. Because that's one of the things that happens a lot with bread. If you're new to gluten-free, definitely just get a box mix. It is so much easier. Don't like stress yourself out about trying to make homemade gluten-free bread, especially if you're new to gluten-free, or even if you've been gluten-free for a while, because homemade bread, gluten-free bread is really probably the hardest thing to make that I've found in my baking experience. One of the things I am definitely going to recommend for you, my gluten-free friends, is there is a company, if you haven't checked them out, I absolutely love them for several different reasons. One is because they do all grain-free, which I'm grain, eating grain-free, and I found for me, eating grain-free really helps my digestive system, and it helps me with like, because I'm not eating all these grains of carbohydrates, it also helps me with weight management, and as I'm getting older, because I just turned 50 this July, it's, as you get older, it's just harder to maintain the weight, because everything slows down, it's just a natural aging process. I highly dislike it. I don't mind getting older, I don't want to age. Aging is what bothers me, for sure. All of their products are, they're also grain-free, which I absolutely love. Another thing I love about this company is that all of the ingredients, like they don't use pres like artificial preservatives or colors or anything you don't want in your body, which I absolutely love because I try to eat as healthy as possible. For instance, their almond flour baking mix of, for artisan bread is absolutely fantastic. You can make bread or flatbread out of it or dinner rolls, and it's super for lots of different uses. And the ingredients are almond flour, arrowroot, flax meal, tapioca, starch, sea salt, and baking soda. I know what all those things are, and it's just they're listed on the side of the box and they're not tiny because they don't have a lot of ingredients that you don't want in your body. So really simple ingredients. I love this. A lot of their products are certified gluten-free by the Gluten Intolerance Group, which I absolutely love because that shows that they are safe to eat. So what is this brand? You're probably asking. <laughs> so this brand is Simple Mills, and I will give, tell you they are one of my brand partners. I only have brand partners that I believe in and I know are good for you, safe to eat, and taste great. That has That's important because just because it's gluten-free does not mean it tastes bad. I've given this bread to other people who are gluten-free and they absolutely love it. Definitely tasting great has to be one. It has to be healthy for you, relatively speaking, because sometimes, you know, cookies have sugar. I don't like products that have a lot of artificial sweeteners, artificial colors in them, because that's not what I want to put in my body. And I'm sure you guys will probably want to avoid them as much as possible. Not like we can avoid them all the time. I mean, you can if you're really, really, but that's just too stressful for me for my diet. I do like to avoid them as much as possible. And I always avoid them when I'm making my own food. So for this holiday season, Simple Mills, really great stuff. So I'm going to share my screen with you so you guys can see what Simple Mills has to offer on their website. So here's all the different baking mixes that they offer. And of course, you may not want to buy all of them, but I'm just going to give you, this is the one I have right now. So this is the almond flour baking mix artisan bread. I love this bread. It's super tasty. There's the gluten-free certification. I love that you can make flatbread out of it. You can make dinner rolls. Here's the flatbread. And flatbread's excellent. My daughter, who's a very picky eater, she likes the flatbread. And you, or you can make a loaf out of it. And so here are the simple ingredients. Boom, right there, you know exactly what's in it. And I really love this product a lot. So if you're making gluten-free bread, and here it is certified gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, corn-free, dairy-free, gum and emulsifier-free. And it's plant-based. It's non-GMO, which I absolutely love too. And it's paleo friendly because it doesn't have grains in it. And it's also got another certification for being gluten-free. So we know this is safe for anybody who has celiac disease. Now, if you have an almond allergy, clearly you can't use this. Or, you know, if you are staying away from nuts, you don't want to use this product. They have lots of really great other products too. Like for example, if you're looking for pizza, they have an amazing pizza dough, pumpkin bread, pumpkin muffin and bread mix. And then they also have a nut and seed flour 
baking mix that is also really good, certified gluten-free. And this one, the ingredients clearly are going to have nuts and seeds. So they have chestnut. Oh, oh, my chestnut is really good flour. That is really tasty. Almond, buckwheat, and flax. So this is not grain-free because it does have buckwheat in it, but it is really, really good flour. Or arrowroot, organic coconut flour, cream of tartar, baking soda, and sea salt as chestnuts, almonds, and coconuts, clearly. <laughs> and so anyway, this is another great product. So I really love Simple Mills. They are a brand partner, but I only take on brand partners that I believe in their brand and their products. So this chocolate muffin mix, this is also amazing because it really is more of a cupcake than a chocolate muffin. And I serve this to my friends who are not gluten-free and they couldn't tell the difference that they didn't know that it was gluten-free until I told them. And my friend was really happy because she was looking for some healthier alternatives for her son. This has nine grams of added sugar, which is really low for a cupcake. Almond flour, coconut sugar, co cocoa, arrowroot, organic coconut flour, baking soda, and sea salt. And this is super tasty. And it is coconut sugar. So coconut sugar is a very much healthier sugar than white white sugar is. So they have muffins on here, which also doubles as cupcakes. And they also have like how to make a round cake. This is an excellent if you're looking for something easy to make for your holiday baking. They have chocolate, they have vanilla, they have banana. So if you're looking for, like if you have family over and you're looking for a nice muffin to make in the morning, banana bread is a fantastic choice. Their brownies are great. I made almost all of these. I haven't made their chocolate chip cookies, but I'm assuming that they're really good because all of their products I had are excellent. When you are thinking about what you want to do for your gluten-free bread or baking mixes this holiday. Definitely consider Simple Mills, my friends. I love them for lots of different reasons. They're a really great company. They are woman-owned. So Catlin and the Simple Mills team, which I always love supporting woman-owned businesses. So definitely check out Simple Mills. Also, another brand that I love that I'm going to have on my Instagram is Melly's Cookies. So if you're looking for more cookies that are not grain-free, that are that but are really good, Melly's is good. But definitely check out Simple Mills if you're looking to make some amazing gluten-free bread. This is gluten-free and grain-free. So it also checks off the paleo box for your paleo family members as well. And they will be very impressed that you have a delicious bread that's gluten-free, grain-free, and healthy for you. All all right, my friends, I hope you got a lot of great information on gluten-free bread from this episode. I've been really excited to put this out because I know gluten-free bread is like, that's the first thing when you're gluten-free, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna eat bread again. Here's an amazing choice for you to make. It's in a box, super easy to make. And you can go to simplemills.com to find out more about their product. And I will definitely put that link in the show notes below. At the end of every podcast, of course, I ask my guests the questions, travel plans. So I will do that now for you guys because I haven't done that in a solo episode in a while. So my first question is, is what is the city, region, or place you would recommend to a gluten-free traveler? I'm always recommending Portland. I love Portland. It is so amazing. My last episode, I had Ellen on from the Celiac Scene, Victoria, Canada. If you're going outside the US, is another great option. Travel restrictions are now gone for getting into Canada. You don't have to pay $250 across the border. It's really great that we can now go into Canada, into Victoria. That's a great place to travel if you're gluten-free. So it's Portland. Portland has 15, 15 dedicated, not just gluten-free friendly, dedicated to restaurants in the area that are amazing. Lots of breweries. If you like gluten-free beer, then this is a great place to come because there's lots of dedicated gluten-free breweries that I also highlighted in my gluten-free Portland series this past summer. So definitely Portland for sure. What is the next trip you're taking or thinking about taking? Uh, my next trip I'm taking is a two-week repositioning princess cruise and I'm super excited. It starts out in Europe. We're going to hit two ports in France, two ports in Spain, and we're going to also hit two ports in Portugal. So it's going to be Cherbourg, France, Bordeaux, France, Bilbao, Spain, there's another location in Spain that we're going to, and the Azores, which are the islands that have lots of volcanic activity and hot baths on, which I'm super excited to go soak in the hot springs and the Azores. And it, it looks beautiful and fantastic. We're going to come back to Florida. So by the time this podcast airs, I will have been back for a few days. So I look for my posts on Instagram for sure. I'm definitely going to post some stuff on Instagram for my trip. I'm so excited. I'm going Princess Cruises too, because Princess does such an amazing job on gluten-free. And because I'm corn-free too, they actually 
actually made me my own bread last trip before I went back to grain free. So they made me a loaf of bread with just rice flour in it with no corn flour so I could eat it. Like I was not expecting them to do that. I'm like, no, you don't have to do that. They did it anyway. And so I was able to eat French toast, gluten-free French toast, bread all week. It was so good. But this time I'm not going to do the bread because I'm doing grain freight. Princess Cruises is a great cruise line to go to if you ha are gluten-free. I've traveled on them several times and I've not gotten sick on Princess. It's truly amazing and the food is exquisite if you're a foodie. Next question I'm going to answer for you is, what is the food you miss most and why? Right now it's croissants because I still haven't gotten a good gluten-free croissant. I know where to find them in New York City um, and I was planning on going there a few weeks ago, but I had to change around my trip. So I'm going to be going to New York City in April and I'm going to pack a bag of gluten-free croissants and bring them home with me on my Delta flight. Uh, what is the best gluten-free food I've recently eaten? Oh gosh, that is a hard one. I think, you know, honestly, it just turned cold. It just got cold in the Pacific Northwest just in the past week. And I love good chili. And I actually made this really amazing vegetarian chili with a organic bean mix that was super fantastic. So it was literally like beans from a can, like you just throw in like four cans of beans. And then I put in some chopped up some serrano peppers. I added some oregano and some other spices. I also added beef broth. And you can also use vegetarian broth if you want to do vegetarian. I also just added some other spices in there like salt. I cooked it up in my Instapot. Instapot is like the best invention on earth because you just hit the button and then do other things. And then in half an hour, your food is done. You take it out and I put some Mexican cheese on top with some sour cream and it was just amazing. And then I ate it with my um, against the grain bread, which is another really great bread that I absolutely love. And that one's not a mix. That one you buy at the store, but I just have a hard time finding it where I live. It's an hour north of where I live. So I always have to buy extras of it. So I'm running out again. Great chili. I loved it. And I can actually eat more today for lunch while I'm thinking about it. I think that covers all my questions. So my friends, I hope you're having an amazing gluten-free day. And remember to rate and review Travel Gluten Free Podcast on your favorite podcast player. I really would appreciate that. All right, my friends, remember to enjoy food, enjoy travel, enjoy life. If you're looking for some help with your gluten-free travel, connect with me on the, my website, travelglutenfreepodcast.com, and definitely follow me on Instagram, Travel Gluten Free Podcast. All right, my friends, have a great gluten free day, and I will see you next episode, which is the last episode for season seven. Travel Gluten Free Podcast is a production of Travel Gluten Free LLC. Looking for a great way to connect with over 2,000 consumers per month? Contact Aliquity for information on sponsorship levels to boost your business. Subscribe today so you won't miss a single episode of Travel Gluten Free. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts.